welcome back to Disturbed Reality. Today once again we delve into the cartel world and we will be exploring a more unknown cartel execution tape. Before we get into this, I wanted to give one of my subscribers, Luis, a quick shout out for pointing me in the direction on where to find this video. Despite the fact that this video is somewhat unknown in the gore community, the fact is that it is extremely brutal, sadistic, and just downright cruel. The clip was released around 2013, and upon further research, not to my surprise, this video, this execution, was the product of the war between the Gulf Cartel and Los Etas, which was arguably the most brutal war in narco history. If you followed this channel for any length of time, I'm sure you guys are aware of the origins of Los Etas and what led to their war with the Gulf Cartel. In brief summary, Los Etas were originally the armed wing of the Gulf Cartel, and they were formed during the late 90s. Essentially, the story is this. In 1996, then Gulf Cartel leader Juan Garcia Abregu was arrested by Mexican authorities, and subsequently, he was extradited to the USA, where he is now serving life in prison. At the time, this plunged the Gulf Cartel into turmoil and internal struggle. The truth is, Juan Garcia Abregu was a very strong, stable, and experienced leader. Once he was arrested, all hell broke loose within the Gulf Cartel, a struggle in which almost cost the cartel their very existence. From 1996 till 1999, there were many leaders of the Gulf Cartel during this time period, but leadership was constantly changing hands due to incompetence and various high up members getting arrested. However, in 1999 things changed. Ocial Cardenas took control of the Gulf Cartel, and in July of that year, he assassinated Salvador Gomez Herrera, aka El Chava, who was the co-leader of the Gulf Cartel, and actually a close friend of Ocial Cardenas, but Cardenas was vying for power, and friendship came second, so El Chava had to go. This earned Cardenas the nickname of Mata Amigos, which means friend killer. Due to the hostile nature of the Osio Cardenas takeover, he found himself in a fight to keep his organization and leadership untouched. At this point, he sought out members of the Mexican Army Special Forces to become the military armed wing of the Gulf Cartel. His goal was essentially to protect his leadership, protect himself from rival drug cartels, and from the Mexican military. Among his first recruits was Arturo Guzman de Sena, whose code in the army was Z1. He was an army lieutenant who was reportedly asked by Cardenas to look for the best men possible to form the armed wing of the Gulf Cartel. Consequently, Arturo Guzman de Sena deserted the armed forces and brought more than 30 army deserters to form the paramilitary wing of the Gulf Cartel, they were enticed with salaries much higher than those of the Mexican army. They would soon refer to themselves as Los Setas due to their military background and former army codes. So for example, Arturo Guzman de Sena, the original Zeta, was known as Z1. And that's where the name originated. All it really means in English is the Zeds. But regardless, soon after their inception, the Zetas became a powerful asset for the Gulf Cartel. Due to their effective recruitment, their military background, tactics, and discipline, they were extremely successful battling other cartels for drug routes and also territory. Ultimately, the Zetas changed the game and changed it for the worse. They introduced the militaristic aspect to cartel warfare. Quite frankly, the other cartels had to keep up or risk being annihilated, so then you saw the other cartels also form their own armed wings within their organizations, and as a result, the violence skyrocketed to a whole new level. But nevertheless, after the unstable years of the late 90s, largely down to the success of the Zetas, the Gulf Cartel started to regain stability and influence by the early 2000s. 
the relationship between the Gulf Cartel and the Zetas during this time period was extremely fruitful. New territories were being gained, new drug routes were being established, and profits were going through the roof. Everything was going well for the Gulf Cartel. However, in 2003, then leader Osio Cardenas was captured by the Mexican military and subsequently he was then extradited to the USA in 2007. Initially, this didn't really affect business all that much. While Cardenas was in prison in Mexico, he was still able to control the Gulf Cartel and the Zetas. However, that soon changed after his extradition to the USA. He no longer had contact with his criminal associates. After the extradition, Los Zetas became so powerful that they outnumbered and outclassed the Gulf Cartel in revenue, membership and influence by 2010. As a result, in 2010, the Zetas decided to go their own way without the Gulf Cartel. The split was far from amicable and it led to one of the most brutal wars in narco history. The violence from this war was unprecedented, numerous mass graves were found, many innocent civilians killed, and it felt like at the time a new torture or execution video was being released each week, some of which you can still find in the dark recesses of the internet. That brings us to the video at hand. It depicts the brutal torture and execution of Los Etas member Commander Bebe. Commander Bebe was a plaza boss in the area of San Luis Potosi for Los Setas, where he was in charge of collecting money from other criminal groups in order so that they could conduct business in the plaza. However, unfortunately for Commander Bebe, he was captured by the Gulf Cartel and they decided to make an example of him. After the murder, they left the following message. This is what is going to happen to all of the Zetas that are thinking of entering San Luis Potosi. We demonstrate it with work and not with narco banners. Sincerely, the Gulf Cartel. But nevertheless, what happens in the video? The video opens up and you see Commander Bebe laying on the ground on his back. His hands have been tied behind his back and his shirt has been pulled over his head to blindfold him. I'd estimate that he's surrounded by three to four Gulf Cartel members, though it is hard to tell. One of the Cartel members takes what appears to be a thick wooden plank or bat, and he starts hitting Commander Bebe's feet with it. The video skips forwards and it shows you the aftermath, and his feet have been hit so hard with a blunt object that you can see blood leaking through his socks. All throughout this, you can hear the muffled grunts of pain. The video then skips forwards again, and they take the shirt of Commander Bebe's head and they stuff his mouth with a gag. At this point, it gets a whole lot worse. One of the cartel members then takes a small knife and starts slicing off Commander Bebe's left ear. The sounds are horrible in this portion of the video. You can hear Commander Bebe trying to scream, but because he's been gagged, it almost sounds like he's aggressively snoring. That's the best way I can describe it. Once the ear has been severed, they then place it in his gagged mouth. The camera then pans to his face briefly, and despite it being in poor quality, you can still see the pain and fear in Commander Bebe's eyes. The video then skips forwards once more, and the torture is not over. You can see that the cartel guys have hooked up a car battery with some jump cables, so you know what's coming next. They then take the jump cables and electrocute Commander Bebe. They start by shocking his chest. You see the sparks fly, you hear the sound of electric, and you hear him letting out grunts of pain. They repeat the process several times, and also electrocute his face. The video skips forwards once more, and it shows the Gulf Cartel members putting Commander Bebe out of his misery. They behead him with a small knife that was used to cut his ear off. Commander Bebe is already dead at this point in the video because they show you halfway through the dismemberment process, but it shows them hacking and slicing away. The video then cuts forwards once again and the beheading has been completed and in the final segments of the video they take the head and balance it on his chest so that they could take photos on their phones, and that is where the video ends. 
So yeah, it's an extremely graphic video, and I wouldn't recommend that you guys go searching for it. Given the time period from where this video is from, it's not really surprising to see that amount of violence. Obviously, the war between the Gulf Cartel and Los Setas was extremely brutal, and honestly, that war really helped perpetuate and popularise graphic narco content. And while there were these sort of videos before the Gulf Cartel and Los Etas engaged in their war, it was really during this time period where it became normality in the narco world. These days, when a video is released, nobody is surprised, nobody bats an eyelid, and it is what it is. And the fact we think like that is kind of disturbing in itself. But the reality is, these sort of videos now are just expected and that's extremely sad. It does make you wonder, can things get any worse than they are now? I hope not, but the reality is, the murder rates in the parts of the world where these cartels operate seem to be increasing year on year. We see more graphic and heinous acts of violence being released to social media, and it feels like this is never ending, so all we can really do is hope and pray that things get better. But yeah, don't go searching for the video it's not worth it. And yeah, that is the video. I hope you enjoyed it, if you can enjoy this sort of content. As always, thank you for the support. Thank you to Luis for helping me find this video. If you have any other video topics in mind, please feel free to share them in the comments below. And as always, stay safe, and I'll catch you on the next one.